Everybody wants to get Wave of the Winter. That's why there's 100 guys out of Pipeline. Wave of the Winter is a, a collection of work throughout the entire winter. It's the most unique event in the world. It's solely based on who rides the best wave. To win would be a, a dream. When I look at a wave of the winter, that wave has to be perfect. You know, the wave that really stands out as the most challenging, most difficult wave to ride, the deepest, most critical barrel. You know, for me, that's, that's wave of the winter. You take the drop, you set your line, and what the wave's gonna do is up to pipeline. Definitely standouts this winter was Cole Rothman. Got a couple nice waves. Also Mason Ho, you know, definitely been putting on a clinic for the last couple of years. John John Florence wave for me was one of the heaviest drops. He had a couple in the top 10 for me. One of the waves that really, that I love, that really stood out to me was Landon McNamara's wave. You kind of rarely see guys get waves from the second reef. Invisible to the eye. To see them do. Bruce Irons had a couple of beauties. There was so many good waves and so many good rides. It was like ridiculous. It always boils down to who had just that little bit of an edge over the other guy. I live at Pipeline for a reason. You know, I want to be on it. And when it's on, I want to be on it. it. It's always tricky out at like Pipeline and Backdoor, like trying to judge like which one's going to be good or not. When you get a good wave at pipe, you kind of hope it spits. It's like the grand finale. It's like it's like everything just you know unfolds at the end, and it makes it like so much more dramatic. When I make that decision of wave of the winner, um, it's usually not so much only based on the ride, but how perfect that wave is. What inspires me is people doing what they love to do and not compromising. So. I think this event really speaks to that surfer out there. The fact that there's so many guys out there now uh, makes getting a wave of the winner really a tough job. I mean, not only you know just making the wave, riding and making it, but getting that wave. Joel's wave was incredible. That was uh, just such a, an intense backdoor wave. That was one of the best waves ever in contests at, at backdoor for sure. Pulled up that day, uh, pulled out my 6.9, it was a quad. As I was kind of pounding for it, I didn't think it was gonna be like that nuts, you know, cause it just looked like a perfect little backdoor teepee. And then as it kind of hit the, hit the reef, it just really doubled up and really went square. And kind of as I paddled and got into it, I kind of got that initial pump, which was like, was key. Like I just, if you look in the photos and stuff, I have like, photos where I'm like my hands are way up like that and as I seen the exit it just spit like so hard and like you know I couldn't see anything so I kind of threw my arm up because obviously I was in a, in a contest and I was like I want the judges to see me you know At the same time I was like so stoked that I just I made it you know and everybody always asked me about getting axed and I was like well I didn't really feel it because I was so happy I came out of the thing you know I've never had a perfect 10 that was actually the first perfect 10 I've ever got as a professional Koa Rothman's wave for me was one of the best all year long. At least a 10 footer, you know, barely on the first reef, knifed it right underneath a boil, super heavy late drop, barely got under the lip as he bottom turned, it blew its guts out. I could watch that wave over and over again on a loop. It was probably one of the best waves of my life out there, actually. Just from like how steep the drop was and like getting such a good pump and just 
the whole time in the barrel, just so close to getting like whacked off my board. Waiting for that moment when I shake the bomb on my body often. It's my time. Waiting for that moment. What I'm waiting for that moment. We had a handful of days this year where it was buttery south wind, and Mason's way was just amazing. Um, that being said, Mason's drop was really heavy. He grabs the rail from the start and draws a really good line, you know, way behind the section. The wave itself breathed a little bit as he was in the barrel. I just remember that day was like real perfect pipeline and back door. I like took off and it did like this weird breathe and it spit twice and I got to come out after and that was like, one of my best waves, for sure, just because it looked so perfect. Well, Jamie's wave, you know, as he took off was really late. He grabs the rail on the drop, you know, to really sort of hold his line. He let go of his rail more than once, and when that wave peeled into the sandbar, it definitely had some chandeliers, uh, but then it just blew its guts out, and he came flying out. I think it actually spit twice. December 21st, pipeline was firing. It was a real long interval swell. It, it had a lot of water pulling off the reef and, and the thing just had the longest wall. Like the wall was just stretched down to the sandbar and locked in and you know I just it threw one time then it threw again and then I felt the breathe back. We call it the vapor. Like it just sucks you sometimes straight off your board but it sucked real hard and then it started spitting and then it sucked one more time and then it just started spitting and like the whole time I was like a complete whiteout. I mean whiteout, I had my eyes open and I couldn't see nothing. So I was still I was on that way. When you compare a wave like Mason's wave to Jamie's, um, the last few years have been won by waves like Mason's. Jamie's wave, he had to work and fight a little more to get through it. And Mason had one of those waves that, you know, I mean, he did a lot of work too, but so did the wave. I think the only thing that really, for me, separated those two waves was the fact that if Mason's wave had a second section that he had to negotiate. And for Jamie, um, he set a heavy line, he was really deep, and he let go of the rail a couple times. So he rode that wave as good as you could, which made it really exciting. It wasn't a no-brainer where you knew he was coming out. He surfed that wave 100%. Mason has a really good chemistry with pipeline, you know, it's obviously in the blood, but at the same time, you know, he surfs so much that I think his talent level is just through the roof. Mason's killing it. He's like a modern day Michael Ho. He's gonna be a standout for years to come out there. The backdoor shoot, obviously, he won, and he made the finals in the Volcom Conocet pipe. And just the season that he's had in general out there, I think the quality of those rides, you know, really stood out above basically everybody else. Mason got my vote unequivocally for performer of the year, for sure. I wanted to donate the 10 grand to Sunset Beach Elementary School because it's where it all started for me, and I, I just remember I always wanted, this is where I like wanted to be a pro surfer on these, on this little yard. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Hey. Yay. Big money for the school. Yay. Big money. Get Big money. Yay. You know, 
know, I, I went back and forth looking at both waves and, um, you know, and I also had Joel's wave in there and it was, you know, for me, that was like such an intense wave. And I think, you know, in the end, Mason and Jamie's waves were just a little bit deeper, a little more um, challenging to negotiate. Surfing is subjective and there are always gonna be gray areas. It was a pretty clear decision for me personally. I can only speak on behalf of my, myself and, and uh, what I saw. I think the beauty of this contest is we have four judges. Um, and I, I personally like it when we don't agree. That means we all have a, you know, a nice strong opinion. Um, and it was tough, really tough. They were so close, it was so hard. We really, the judges went back and forth on this thing. I really thought that Mason had a better wave, a better looking wave, a wave that I would want to ride more. Jamie did get a longer tube ride and he was just in there, you know, and it was a little more critical and it didn't look like he was coming out and then he did. And so, you know, by just the slimmest of margins, we kind of all had to go, okay. I think we came out with the right decision. Jamie's wave just stood out to me personally and I could look at it and go, all right, now there's the wave of the winner. I've never seen any surfer so dedicated to surfing one specific wave and, and to surf it as well as he does. Um, you know, I, I think that it should validate uh, to the surfing world, you know, what an incredible talent that he is out there. You know, it's, it's very uh, fitting that, you know, a guy of his caliber actually uh, wins this event. Jamie is a freak at pipe. He catches more waves than anyone, and they're all bombs. I can't believe this is his first year winning, so congratulations, Jamie. The dog. Yeah, come on. Congratulations, bro. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. Yeah, it was, I guess, the wave of the winter, and I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. It's, it's real humbling. And I didn't, I didn't think I was gonna win. The wave just spit. It just like it's had this X factor spitting wave that usually doesn't come in that pipe, and I was kind of stoked on it. I like that there's a little bit of luck involved. You know. It's, um, We've had a different winner every year, and I think uh, it's simply because that guy was sitting in the lineup at the right time when that wave came in, and it was a gem, and, and that's what makes this, this event so cool. You know, if you have the, the guts, the balls to get out there on the biggest days and, and uh, you know, step over that ledge and challenge yourself and go for it, um, anybody's capable of winning this event. It's, you know, you never know, man, who's gonna win in the end. The money comes and goes. The stat of winning the wave of the winner will never go. 